One of my favorite nights in gaming has come and gone. Let's talk. What up viewers, what up, what up, Calc Soups here, and today is Friday, December 10th, and that means it's time for a quick recap of the week in video game news. Uh, the Game Awards, like I said, is one of my favorite times of the year and one of my favorite gaming events of the year. Um, it happened last night. It was um, it was quite quite a long um, quite a long event, as they typically are. Most Jeff Keighley events, I think, are a little bit long winded, um, but I, overall, I think it was a great night. Um, first, let's talk about the awards, the actual awards. Um, it takes two got game of the year as uh, best family game and best multiplayer game. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, I see a little bit, you know, I want to cast a little bit of shade on Yosef Ferris being very close friends with Jeff Keighley, uh, whether or not that makes a little bit of sense. Um, I had Resident Evil Village down as my vote for best game, but um, I could definitely see it takes two. There was a lot of games on there that I thought were, were really well done. So I'm kind of glad that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not too opposed to uh, It Takes Two taking the winner. It just means that I have to play it very soon, which is why I wore my Player One shirt, because hopefully me and my wife play it sometime soon. Um, Deathloop also got recognized quite a few times. I think it had like five or six um, nominations, and it got Best Game Direction and Best Art Direction, which is great, because the gameplay was very innovative and fun, um, and the art direction was very, very timely, uh, while all very stylistic. Um, I really like the art, and I think everybody else would agree the art in Deathloop was great. Um, Kenna, Bridge of Spirits, actually won two awards, Best uh, best Indie Game and Best Debut Game from an indie studio. Um, while they were published under while they were published under Sony, um, they're still an independent studio, so Ember Labs is still an independent studio, so it was cool to see, uh, cool to see them get recognized. Uh, I just started playing it. Uh, just this week, so um, looking forward to getting to you know the good meaty parts that uh, that are Kenna. Uh, the one award that I cannot argue with is, uh, and I want to say congratulations to Maggie Robertson for uh, her win as best voice actor or actress in a video game uh, for playing Lady Dimitrescu. Um, uh, she was obviously everywhere. Part of the they leaned in with her on the marketing material. And I thought she was a great character, and I think most everybody else did. Um, so I, again, want to congratulate Maggie on that. Um, yeah, overall, I thought Resident Evil was going to get a lot more um, was going to get a lot more than it did. Uh, I didn't quite expect a lot of the Forza Horizon stuff. Um, and like I said, uh, Deathloop I think had really good. Uh, Deathloop wasn't my first choice, but I think it had a lot of really good. Um, I think it deserved the ones that it did. Uh, and I haven't played Kenna or It Takes Two, so couldn't really comment too much on those. But uh, overall, yeah, I thought it was a really good show, and uh, I'm kind of I'm mostly satisfied with um, with the games that were chosen, except for maybe best game narrative. With um, uh, best game narrative was Guardians of the Galaxy, which I did not hear good things about. Again, haven't played it, but uh, did not hear good things about that. Uh, Metroid Dread winning best action game I thought made sense. Uh, I heard really good things about it. Um, another one that I kind of opposed was um, <clears throat> oh best RPG going to Tales of Arise. Haven't played Tales of Arise, but I did play Cyberpunk, and while it did have a really glitchy start, I still think it is probably one of the most immersive RPGs that you can play on consoles today. So um, that was kind of my experience, and so I thought uh, I thought Cyberpunk kind of got um got got the slip on that one but um never mind let me know what you think of all the winners and losers down below in the comments and i'll be happy to talk about them with you there besides being a night of uh a night of awards and celebrating video games they also it is also a marketing platform for a lot of big announcements so uh, i'll run through the ones that caught my eye, the ones that I found very interesting, but uh, there was like 50 or so announcements, so I'm not going to talk about all of those because I don't have all night. Um, the first ones that, uh, one of the first ones out of the gate and one of the first ones that caught my eye was more Telltale games coming down the pipe. Um, I, you know, with Telltale going under, I'm really, I was really curious about more Telltale games. I'm wondering if it's Telltale in name and not like the company Telltale, because um, again, I think they went under or at least I remember them distinctly going under. 
Um, but there's going to be a Telltale game on the Expanse, which looks pretty cool. Might be a good way for me to interact with that world because I haven't gotten too much into the TV show. Um, there's also a Telltale Star Trek game coming out. So again, two Telltale games and uh, are coming down the pipe. And I love those kind of visual novel kind of choice, uh, your choices matter kind of games. So uh, really looking forward to seeing what comes from those Telltale games. Another big awesome thing that's coming down the pipe. I think we've known a little bit about it for quite some time, but Alan Wake 2, uh, Remedy has been working to get the EIP back and, and be able to make a game for it. Um, so yeah, Remedy is making Alan Wake 2. Very, very cool, uh, very exciting stuff. Also, it's going to be survivor horror and less action-y. Again, the first one I think uh, was a little bit more action-y and even Sam Lake, uh, the creative director, uh, talked about it being a... Um, Talked about it being too action-y, and so the fact that they're taking Alan Wake um, to a more survival horror will, I think, be very, very cool in the kind of world in the the northwest, you know, dreary um, rain, I think, would, would definitely lend itself to a pretty cool survival horror in a kind of city setting, which would be pretty fun. Um, the latest Star Wars game coming down the pipe, Star Wars Eclipse, um, from Quantic Dream, got a got a debut trailer, just like a CG trailer. Um, Quantic Dream is the company that made Detroit Become Human and Heavy Rain, so a very very well known uh, studio for uh, very good narrative games, um, a lot of choice driven narrative games. So I think that's going to be really fun in a Star Wars um, in a Star Wars setting. So uh, it's finally it's finally time that you know the fact that EA lost exclusive rights to Star Wars, we're starting to see the comeuppance of of what happens when a bunch of other studios have access to the Star Wars IP and what games they can create out of it. And uh, I think Star Wars narratives is kind of where it's at. I know a lot of people want to play um, as a Jedi or as a trooper and, and shoot around, you know, and we've had Battlefront and Fallen Order for that. Um, but I really kind of want to see a Star Wars narrative. One of the best Star Wars games I can think of is Star Wars The Old Republic um, or Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, which are really narrative focused games. Uh, so it's something I'm very much looking forward to uh, with those. We also got to see an extended bit of gameplay for Hellblade 2, Senua's Sacrifice. Um, Senua, uh, Hellblade 1, Senua's, uh, oh god, what's the first one called? I think, is the first one called Senua's Sacrifice? Oh yes, the first one's called Senua's Sacrifice. The second one is called Senua's Saga. Um, anyway, Hellblade 1 is one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, and so I'm really excited for Hellblade 2. We still don't have a date for the game yet, um, but we have to see an extended bit of, of uh, gameplay. So I'm hoping in the next year, um, but again, they haven't listed any date. Although the fact that they didn't say 2022 maybe means that it's not gonna be, or they're just playing, playing a little bit close to the chest. But uh, overall, Hellblade 2 looks great. Um, also one of the most visually impressive uh, trailers that we saw there. I, it really looks, uh, the fidelity on it looks really good. I know they're doing a bunch of crazy stuff with the motion capture uh, and the lead actress. So very much looking forward to more Hellblade 2. One of the surprises for me and probably for a lot of people um, was Wonder Woman, uh, a new Wonder Woman game coming out, uh, coming from Monolith, the studio, uh, the studio behind the Shadow War games, as well as way back the Fear games. So um, the fact that they're working on Wonder Woman, I know that WB has been lo looking for a looking to do a Wonder Woman game for quite some time. So uh, I think they found a, a perfect fit. I'm curious how the Nemesis system, which Monolith is kind of known for, um, how that's gonna kind of fit in and whether or not it does at all. Um, but very excited to, to know what's going on with Wonder Woman. Although this was just a an announcement that the game is being worked on. So I wouldn't expect this for the next two, three, maybe even four years. So, uh, but I know it's gonna be in good hands with the guys over there at Monolith. Space Marine 2, um, a game, a, a sequel a decade in the making, um, is also coming out. Uh, I think it also said 2022. Uh, something I was very excited about, I loved the third person shooting in Space Marine. Like I've always said, I love the Warhammer 40K universe uh, and all games within it. Uh, and Space Marine was always one of the, was probably one of the better sellers of all time for, um, for Games Workshop, so looking forward to Space Marine 2, getting my hands and uh, you know becoming an Ultramarine and, and chain chainsorting my way through 
uh, some Tyranids. We got a little bit more gameplay with Plague Tale Requiem. Uh, the fact that it's a micro Microsoft Studio game and the Game Awards take place at the the uh, Microsoft Theater. I bet there's a little bit of a uh, uh, little bit of coercion there, but um, yeah, it was really cool to see a little bit more for Plague Tale Requiem. Um, another one that I was very excited for was the Dune RTS that's coming out. Uh, I think it's called Dune Spice Wars. Um, they had a really cool image for it where they just had like Arrakis in the palm of a hand. You saw the sand, you saw the worms. Um, the Dune RTS, for, for those who don't know, was probably one of the first RTSs to kind of hit the market, uh, really set up the, the market for uh, Command and Conquer and what later come like the Warcraft games. Um, so yeah, Dune, Dune being in this kind of like 4X RTS space, I think it's going to be look work really well. Also, I'm a little bit biased because I'm a giant, massive Dune uh, Dune fan. So very much looking forward to all the Dune games that are being worked on now after the success of the, the movie, which I thought was amazing. Last but not least, and not even a video game, but the Halo TV show. Um, we got like a 30 second trailer for that. Uh, and it looks great. Makes me want to go back and watch uh, Forward Unto Dawn, which I think was another Halo universe TV series. So... Uh, looks like they've got a lot of money behind it. Everything looks really good. A lot, some of it looks even practical, which uh, I think is going to look really good on TV. Uh, I'm looking forward to um, looking forward to seeing what happens with the Halo TV show. Um, so let me know what you think down below. So those, that's everything that kind of happened at the Game Awards, or at least what caught my eye. If there's anything you think I forgot down below in the comments you want to talk about, feel free to uh, feel free to shout it out there. Uh, moving right along, do. Blah, blah, blah. Halo Infinite <laughs> finally launched the campaign this week. I know we talked about it last week with the fact that we've had the multiplayer for quite some time and that the um, the campaign would be launching this week. Um, but the reviews are in. Um, Halo Infinite is currently sitting at an 86 Metacritic, which I think is uh, right around where uh, where I would have expected it. Uh, means it's pretty good, and, and for Halo fans and uh, potentially uh, generic uh, shooter fans, I think it's going to be a game that's going to be right up their alley. Um, I've already started reading a couple of the reviews. I've seen, looked at like the how long to beat because I got a little bit of mixed signals between whether or not it would be an eight hour campaign or a 30 hour campaign. It looks like on how long to beat, it's about nine to 15. Um, so it seems like it's really uh, bite sized. It's longer than your average Call of Duty campaign nowadays, but uh, you know, not the not the robust 40, 50 hour uh, experience you would kind of expect. I've heard really good things about the open world environment and that Halo really suits itself for that. Um, the fact that it doesn't really get too too repetitive at any at any times, uh, you know, while there are missions that you uh, will do over and over again, uh, apparently it's not too grindy. So I'm kind of looking forward to it. I bet I hear the boss fights are actually really good. So uh, I'm very much looking forward to hopping into Halo Infinite. Uh, I already tried to play it earlier this week. I actually tried to play it on launch yesterday, um, but uh, the, or no, on Wednesday was when it launched. I tried to play it on Wednesday, but I woke up too early for the West Coast uh, servers going online, so I had to play something else. But um, other than that, I don't think there's been any other hiccups and I'm looking forward to playing Halo Infinite other than Watch out for the, there's a PSA that came out this week saying avoid the quick resume on Halo because it might corrupt your save file or something like that. So uh, just something to keep track of. But overall, I am looking forward to Halo Infinite. Talked a lot about Star Wars so far, and we're going to talk about it a little bit more. Um, the new mobile Star Wars game, Star Wars Hunter, got, a, got an extended gameplay trailer this week. Um, Star Wars Hunter's feature is like an arena shooter on mobile so it looks really fun um and it, they really showed off each of the individual characters each of their special abilities um and, and it just overall looks like a pretty fun uh mobile game with star you know with star wars characters um i'm the only thing i have to figure out is how to play it on controller so hopefully i can get it to work with either my stadia or luna controller uh with my with my phone but otherwise yeah, it looks like a pretty fun um, Star Wars game to play on your phone. So let me know what you think if you download it down below. Activision once again is in hot water with uh, almost everybody. This time uh, with people starting to talk about 
gaming unions and a bunch of employees going on strike. Um, so earlier this week, Activision laid off a bunch of QA contractors at Raven Studios, one of their studios that works on one of the several Call of Duty titles. Um, the Ravens particularly has been working on Warzone, um, and they laid off a bunch of QA uh, contractors, which is typical for the industry, but um, the, the, the QA people decided that they had enough, um, and they staged a walkout uh, in support of their uh, fellow employees who were getting laid off. Um, and all of this is coming on on the back of all of the sexual, the rampant sexual harassment allegations that have been going on at at uh, Activision. So um, even more studios got in on the walkout. So I think even for the past two days, uh, the walkout's been going on. Um, people have been striking, uh, and so there's a lot of conversation about unionizing especially i would i would think if it was going to start anywhere in the games industry it would definitely start at qa because a that is where most people start or a lot of people start in the games industry and b that's probably one of the places the parts of the industry that has the most amount of turnover um they definitely i think the industry definitely does exploit contractors from time to time especially in the qa field um so uh it is interesting to see everybody kind of rally behind that uh and try to unionize there uh, there is a GoFundMe set up for ABK workers, um, Activision Blizzard King workers. Um, I'll have a link down below to where you can kind of go to support that GoFundMe. Uh, because the because the workers are not already unionized, uh, while they are striking, um, it their jobs are not secured like it would be in a union in a union strike. So um, it is a scary time, but a lot of people are showing up in support for. Um, these uh, contractors and support for a union so um, this could be the starts of, of what could you know eventually take over the entire industry is is just getting especially the QA field um, unionized could be very good for the industry so um, yeah like I said on the links down below for where you can check out and potentially support uh, ABK workers we got a little bit of information last week. Um, last week, I think when I talked about the PlayStation Game Pass, uh, the game, the game, the PlayStation's Game Pass, um, the only thing that had kind of come out was just that they were working on it. Um, I got a little bit more information this week talking about how it's going to be called Spartacus. Um, it's going to have tiered. Uh, it's going to have multiple tiers. One that's just going to be for PlayStation Live, uh, or yeah, PlayStation Plus. Uh, then there's going to be one that gets you the free games. There's going to be one that gives you extended demos. Um, so you'll just get more and more content, be able to stream more and more games, uh, depending on what your, your tier level. Um, they also talked about the rollout time frame of next spring, which could be anywhere from February to June. Um, so I wouldn't get my hopes up that this is coming out tomorrow or anything, but uh, we should have it in our hands sometime soon. So um, PlayStation Spartacus, which... I don't know why it is named that, but PlayStation Spartacus will be the alternative to Xbox Game Pass. Let's see if they can roll it out. Uh, what it's going to do to PlayStation Now, which is already their streaming service, uh, and how that kind of get rolls in. Um, so there's definitely a lot of details that need to be ironed out, um, but we do have a lot of information still. Uh, or we do have, a, have some information to kind of build off of. So interesting stuff going on there. The crazy people at Bungie and Nerf have done something glorious. Uh, they have brought they have brought forth and brought into this world a Galahorn. That's right, the infamous rocket launcher from Destiny. Uh, probably one of the most famous guns in all of Destiny. Uh, Galahorn is a rocket launcher that has now been turned into a Nerf, a four foot long Nerf gun, which apparently will like shoot footballs at people. This is gonna be great. Um, so. The pre-orders are already sold out. Unfortunately, I didn't catch I didn't catch on to this uh, until uh, until too late. The pre-orders were on Bungie.com. Um, Destiny players actually got early access to the pre-order. Um, I'm hoping that kind of helps combat bots. Um, but overall, I just think it's great great that this is coming out. Hopefully, they don't. Uh, hopefully, this isn't like a timed exclusive or anything like that, and they just keep printing them because I mean, there's a lot of people who want to shoot rockets at their friend Nerf rockets at their friends. Uh, and I'm definitely one of those. Oh my God, you could put like one of those like whistle footballs in this four foot long tube and shoot it at people. Uh, and I bet Nerf had fi has figured out how to do that. So um, it could be great. 
Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this in the hands of people uh, and potentially getting my hands on a four foot long orange tube of plastic that shoots foam rockets at my friends. So uh, awesome stuff that's going on here and I'm very excited to see more. Scuff Gaming, the company behind a lot of your, a lot of really good alternatives for controllers. Um, they're really known for making video game accessories specifically in the controller space. Um, they have come out to their version of the, they've come out with their version of the DualSense. Um, so it's got a lot of the extra buttons that you would expect from a kind of pro series. I think that's the article I read kind of talked a bit, talked about it as if it was the DualSense Pro. Uh, which which is very uh, interesting and very cool. I'm wondering if it's going to have the haptic feedback. Uh, I didn't read too much on the reviews yet, but um, but very cool to see kind of uh, third party you know third party accessory companies getting in on the dual sense um, and competing with it. And hopefully this lights a fire under uh, Sony's ass to get them to make their own version of the PlayStation 5 Dual Sense uh, Pro controller. Um, but if you uh, want to check out, if you if you can't wait for them to make an official one, check out the Scuff one. Uh, they make great controller accessories and great controllers. So it uh, would be very interesting to, to be able to use that both on your PlayStation 5 as well as on PC. I will sniff up and eat any rumors I get about anything Bioshock. Um, and we had a series of uh, potentially leaks, or if not harsh speculative rumors. Um, that Bioshock 4 will be set in the Antarctic. Um, so going somewhere they haven't gone before, we're now going to get like an ice theme. Um, I think this is going to be really cool. You know, the fact that Bioshock 1 was all underwater, uh, I think add to it, uh, added to its really cool aesthetic. I really liked uh, Bioshock Infinite up in the sky, uh, um, but I think this is kind of a cool new place to take it is kind of see what, what does an ice, what is potentially an underground ice uh, you know, cavernous society look like. So it uh, could be very interesting stuff. Uh, I'm, like I said, very excited. Bioshock is also one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, if not, actually, Bioshock is my favorite game of all time. So uh, I will take up and eat any uh, information I get about that this week. And uh, yeah, excited to see uh, potentially if the rumors are true about the Antarctic uh, uh, starting position or starting place uh and world what that's going to look like and how does that influence kind of you know rapture and your big daddies running around and uh what kind of uh, craziness can ensue there with um with plasmids and powers there so should be pretty cool last but certainly not least um not even very much gaming related but just uh henry cavill as the sexy nerd that he is um had to explain uh two different version two different games games and gaming systems this week on the graham norton show just a pretty brief clip this week um, that i actually saw organically uh without actually going through kind of my feed uh, but henry cavill plays uh warhammer uh you know the tabletop miniatures game um and graham kind of picked on him for having a lot of hobbies because we've kind of seen him a lot talking about how he's a big fan of The Witcher and read all the books, um, but that he's a big PC gamer and he's got his uh, he's got his video of him building his own PC, um, and now he's starting to talk about kind of his uh, Warhammer uh, his Warhammer um, uh, gaming. So it'd be very cool. Uh, Graham Norton got Warhammer and Warcraft confused, uh, two completely different things. Although I think eventually, if you know, if you're deep, deep, deep cut, you could go back to a starting point where they're both in the same place at the same time. Um, but I won't go too much into that ancient history. But uh, yeah, Warhammer and World of Warcraft, two completely different things. Um, and uh, it was pretty, pretty cool checking, uh, seeing how big of a nerd Henry Cavill is, and uh, and him kind of talking about uh, his his hobbies. But overall good times and i want to now i now i want to play uh now i want to play warhammer with henry cavill so how do i make that happen um but that's it for this week thanks for watching i hope you enjoy this content if you do follow like and subscribe to me on youtube and twitch so you can see more great content like this i'll have links down below in the description thanks again i hope you have a super day i hope you have a super weekend and i hope you have a super day bye